Tony Avitio at Timeshare Simplified. Hope this video finds you guys well. I just wanted to do a quick video today about, uh, let's do a continuation of renting out your timeshare. So <clears throat> I've done it for six, eight years now. I've been in the industry for about 18. So, and then I wrote the book Timeshare Tips and Tricks on how to do it. I can't remember exactly the last video I did, so bear with me, but I'll get you through it. So first thing you wanna do, it depends on if you're renting out your weeks or your points, <clears throat> and depends on how much money you wanna get as well, cause you gotta be a little bit realistic. But if you do it right, it is a very lucrative thing. And you know, I do almost $2 million a year, 1.8, we'll probably do this year in timeshare rentals. <clears throat> now I do that renting out people's points, but I wanna do a quick video in case you don't wanna pay somebody like me or pay the, the, your, the company you own with to rent it out. So step one <clears throat> is figure out how many points you don't wanna use or which week you don't wanna use, all right? Now, obviously it's two rental, two different philosophies because weeks are different than points. <clears throat> so, but the basic premise is the same. So you wanna book the best time of the year you have access to for max, if you wanna maximize your value and get the most for it you wanna book the best time of the year that you have access to, such as you know Christmas in Orlando or 4th of July in Myrtle Beach or wherever. So if you're a week's owner, book the best week. They usually sell it in seasons. Sometimes you buy where you buy the whole year. Um, <clears throat> if you wanna determine what the, the best uh, week of the year is, you can go to Interval or RCI and they have that thing, the Trading Demand Index, go to that click on it and it'll tell you the bubbles that are the farthest to the right that'll tell you the best week of the year in that area so <clears throat> you want to pick that week then you need to plan ahead because typically and i've been doing timeshare a long time one of the biggest problems is you can never get what you want especially at the peak times of the year so you always got to be prepared and it, like my philosophy is do the same thing every year that way you don't forget it so and it can be a little confusing, like I'm just about to trade my Marriott Timber Lodge, my gold week, and every other year, the best week to trade is a little bit different. So I have to go to interval every year, figure out what the best week is, and then make sure and book that a year out. So like this year, I have to book April 10th for 2020, and that'll give me my highest trading week. So you wanna do the same thing for rental. So go to RCI or interval, find the best week or else Google the area that you're resorting for the best time of the year to go there. So say you own in Park City, well, there's the Sundance Film Festival. If you own Orlando, it's Christmas week, you know, things like that. So <clears throat> find out the best time of the year, then book that week as far in advance as you can, all right? Now, if you could get a good week earlier, like, say it, like today happens to be uh, the middle of March, so, let's say you could book 4th of July week in Orlando. Well, book that and that way you get your money a lot faster. But the, the and now if you own points, the nice part is you can book any resort, any time. The thing is with most points developers I have experience with besides Marriott, it's pretty much impossible to get good stuff. But not to say that it's impossible, but it, <clears throat> you really wanna check ahead. So now if you're renting out points, you wanna book three or four night stays. All right, because a lot of people, my average rental is probably 2.2 nights. So a lot of people don't like to stay that long because they don't have enough money. A lot of people don't own timeshare, so they can't afford to stay anywhere for a whole week. So you want to do shorter term rentals if you have points. So, so if you have eight nights to rent out, book, you know, three, you know, two three-nighters and a two-nighter or something like that. Or a four-nighter and a three-nighter and a two-nighter, How, however the math adds up for you. All right. <clears throat> so call ahead book the best time of the year at that resort or at that location during the hottest time of the year all right then if you're going to rent it in my philosophy i don't know if you watched any of my other videos is is to rent it out on airbnb it's the biggest marketplace now they got they i, I forget how many views they get like 20 million views a month um we have unbelievable success on it and if you don't have to pay anything if you use home away or vrbo you do have to pay them uh 10 or 15 percent commission depends on how you have it set up <clears throat> but so you have that week book now book it in your name all right just like you're gonna stay there all right and then go to say Airbnb register for an account if you don't have one um, or or just log into your Airbnb account and then you just go post your property I don't know the exact wording it's like list your property I think that's what it says list your property and then on another browser open the resort you have uh, chosen, all right, so say you, you, you own Wyndham and you picked Wyndham, 
whatever, Alexandria, Virginia. Okay, so open up Wyndham, Alexandria, Virginia on the other one. And then just kind of copy and then just follow through. It asks you like the address, which you can get, and the letters and the pictures and things like that. Now, if you can't get the pictures, some of the websites make it so you can't grab the pictures. Just Google the name of the resort. And when you Google it, there's a part at the top where it says images, videos, things like that. Just click on images and you can get images that are free that people have taken, you know, from them staying there or whatever that aren't you know breaking any kind of photo use laws or whatever but <clears throat> so just take and then try to get like anywhere from 8 to 15 pictures get you know the resort grounds definitely got to get the pictures of the room the bathroom things like that those are the main ones the living room bathroom kitchen and then as much of the resort grounds as you can or you can even take it off their website I mean I'm not an, an attorney I don't know if that's you know legal or whatnot so do that at your own risk or contact an attorney or whatever um, so uh, put those pictures in then you're about halfway there <laughs> then you go through in the description obviously you can take the description from their site and maybe just change the wording a little bit and then you can change it it's not a whole process I mean it, it should take maybe 20 to 30 minutes to set up the ad but once you have it set up you always have it set up so you can use the same one year after year after year and you can a little tweak it and improve it or whatever okay now when you set up your calendar all right you can block out all the dates besides the ones you have booked okay now the thing is if you're gonna use Airbnb they don't let you book multiple things at the same time so you want to book two or three night stays for different times of the year so maybe like 4th of July Memorial Day and Labor Day say okay or or that earlier week in the summer something like that so you can't book the same times and then just keep your Airbnb calendar open for uh, the dates that you have <clears throat> all right and then you can just block out the rest of them and then be careful on your nightly minimum just do like a one or two night minimum all right because if you if you if you don't do that and say you put a three night minimum um, well then the people will have to be looking for the exact night uh, check-in date that you have if you put a one night minimum then people might book it um, they might message you and say hey can I get these nights instead and since it's points you can always change the reservation if you need to so it helps you get more business or get it rented out quickly now the other philosophy and what we do primarily is we keep the calendars open so the calendar are open anytime and you could set it at a high uh, at a nightly price that you're comfortable getting for your unit say you said that at 250 bucks a night uh, for your two bedroom and you're like, okay, if I get 250 a night, I'll be okay Well, you could set the pricing for the whole year at 250 a night and then set the pricing for the peak days that you got at 270 or 300 a night whatever the special event pricing is <clears throat> and then and then what you want to do is go to uh, The company's website. So say it's like Wyndham or whatever go to their website extra holidays or Google the name of that resort and find out what they're charging online for those dates and then obviously you want to stay a little bit you want to stay you know 15 to 30 percent less than what they're charging so if they're charging 350 a night you want to charge like 270 you know something like that <clears throat> so and that's kind of how you do your pricing and that way the people know they're getting a good deal you feel good you're getting them a deal and then your maintenance cost is probably only a hundred bucks a night so you're you're getting a good deal so you're making a little bit of profit you're not going to get rich you know running out one week your timeshare all right now if you did like the olympic week or um <clears throat> you know something real special like that then you can get a decent amount of money but that you know those are every couple of years so it's not something to depend on so <clears throat> so you got your ad up and then uh you got your dates blocked out you can leave the dates open as well because then if you own points and you're trying to rent out points well then people will request stuff all the time and then you could just book a, if they happen to want to pay that nightly price that you charge well shoot you shoot you know just just cancel it cancel the other one and rebook them for the couple nights they do want because on Airbnb and then but on Airbnb do not set up instant book if you're gonna do it that way set up the request first which means they have to request the rooms and you and that, that way you can check and see if it's available because with most timeshare developers like I said the rooms are gone you know especially most people want the better times so don't do not do instant book do a request first and then uh, <clears throat> and then that way if people want other dates than the ones you had booked you know and and they're willing to pay the other price then why the heck not and that way you can get your money faster because most people won't book a room until about 60 days before they check in so if you want to um, 
<clears throat> get your money faster or get rid of more points or whatever, that's a technique that we use. Sorry for the dogs are having thunder down back there, but <laughs> so um, so you got that now. Once the person, once the request comes in and they say, hey, the gym wants to pay, you know, $800 for these three nights, okay? You just accept the booking. You tell them, hey, thank you for booking with us. I'll send you out the confirmation letter as soon as it comes in. So <clears throat> you, um, so send out the confirmation letter to them. So obviously you'll have to call your resort and put take your name off of it and put their name on it and then send them the paperwork. Now, Airbnb guarantees you a million dollar guarantee. So you have, um, you know, a million dollar protection. So you don't really have to worry about that because when timeshare, it's like a hotel, when they check in, they put their credit card down. So if there's damages done, the room is charged to them, not to you. And then, uh, but it does, it's nice to have that guarantee in case anything were to happen. So you don't have to worry about that. You send them the confirmation letter and then make sure when you set up the ad about your cancellation policy, you can either do a strict cancellation policy where they can't really cancel, or you can do it down to five days. You can do it down to, one day you know it just depends on you and what i would take into consideration and what the rules of your club are if if they don't let you cancel less than 60 days then make a strict cancellation policy or you know like i own marriott they let you cancel down to you know one day before so i i have a pretty liberal cancellation policy down to five days um, but be, if it's five days or less, they, they can't cancel and I get all the money. So just a couple things to think of. And then uh, with your taxes, um, you do have to claim any income you make, obviously. But the IRS, there, there are rules. If you, if you rent out 14 days of a vacation property, you can do that tax-free of a property owned. So, but get with your accountant on that. Uh, uh, I have two credits in junior college. Uh, my wife found my college transcripts like, well, you passed health and football in two years. And I was like, oh, sweet. I got credit for football. I'm like a regular genius. But um, so I think that's about it. So the lead comes in, the rental, send it out to them, collect the money. Um, boom. And, and that's it. So there's nothing really much more to it than that. Your ultimate is going to be to get the weeks ahead of time, the prime locations or you know and the descriptions my company depending upon which developer you own with you can call us and we can handle all that for 15 percent so yeah subscribe to this channel let me know what topics you guys want me to go over and i'll try to cover them and thanks and god bless